Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang. It's Wednesday, March the 24th, 2021. So glad that you could join me out there and um, I'm really happy that uh, we can do devotions together. We're uh, continuing our parables in, in the Gospels and today's parable is the parable of the lost sheep. So if you have your Bible with you and you want to follow along with me, this parable is found in Matthew chapter 18. Uh, verses 10 to 24. So Jesus had just been speaking to uh, with little children and the little children had gathered around him and, and he said, suffer the little children to come unto me. And he just, he really loved children and loved having them with him. So he just finished just spending time with kids and then he turns his attention towards the adults in view of the children and he says this, See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go back to look for the one that's wandered off? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. Well, Jesus is talking about little children, and then he talks a little bit more about uh, all people. And I'll explain what I'm, I'm meaning by that in a second here. But, you know, when it comes to children, you know, some people are uh, genuinely grumpy when they're around kids and, and they don't like the energy of children, they don't like the silliness or the play of children, they don't like the noise of children or, way, or the way that children seem to get in the way and sometimes the cries of children. Some people uh, have the thought that children should be seen and not heard. Well, in the Jewish society of Jesus' day, a child was a person of no real importance. Um, they were subject to the authority of the elders and taken, uh, I guess, with a grain of salt, not taken seriously except as a responsibility or one to be looked after, not to be looked up to. So this is kind of the culture, um, very heavily elder respect and children should be quiet and stay in their place. Um, but Jesus is looking at the children around him and he's saying, like, don't despise these kids. Don't despise any one of them. In, in God's eye, in God's mind, uh, the children are always on his mind. And uh, we do well to uh, treat them with love and respect. And, uh, you know, according to these verses, it appears that God has a special assignment of angels for little children to look after his little ones. And um, he says that these angels have seen the face of his heavenly father. Now, we've seen in, in the verses just preceding this particular parable that uh, if someone was to hurt one of these little ones, the Bible says that it'd be better for them to have um, a millstone tied about their neck and thrown into the sea than to hurt one of these little children that he cares for. So there's great judgment for people that hurt little children. And um, you'd be best not to go into that territory. But um, it goes further. This parable goes further. Um, Charles Spurgeon once said this concerning this particular parable. He said, here, Jesus emphasizes the love and care we should have for all Christian community. The first temptation is to despise one because only one. The next is to despise one because one is so little. The next, and perhaps the most dangerous form of the temptation, is to despise one because that one has gone astray. Now, God is merciful, and God is is patient and God is kind. Yes, God does judge, but God is slow to anger and abounding in love. And he loves his little children. And here Jesus expands the horizons of this particular parable. Um, I think 
it'd be good for us to think of this. Now, who among us is uh, but a little child in comparison with the ancient of days? Well, I can tell you that even the most advanced in age among us is an infant compared to God. You know, our eldest may reach a hundred, yet time is no boundary for the Lord um, because he, from everlasting to everlasting, is God. So, you know, even the most ancient of us in our physical terms, people that we look up to and say, well, they're old, well, to God, they're still little children. So, I think, you know, what can be said when you look into this parable, what Jesus is saying in this parable is that all of his children are important to him. Now, God looks to the one, and that one is important. You are a child of God. If you've asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior, you enter the kingdom of heaven, and um, you become a child of the living God. You become born again as a spiritual newborn into his family, and you're you're growing, and we're all growing towards maturity, but we're all little children before the Lord. And um, at former times, we were hostile to Him, but now we are accepted and adopted into His family. He views each one of us through the eyes of love. And although we may feel very small sometimes, you know, we never go unnoticed. And if you read this parable, um, he, he keeps his eye on us. And if you're a child of God, he's not going to leave you or forsake you. He's going to stand beside you through the thick and through the thin. And, um, you know, he views each one of his little children as valuable. Even when one of his children wanders off, the master searches for that one child who's wandered off. Maybe you've wandered off. Or maybe you're wandering right now and you're not uh, close to your father. You've taken a detour on a path somewhere into dangerous territory away from the flock. Well, I want you to know that the Lord is pursuing you and maybe he's pursuing you even through the words of this parable, the words that I'm speaking to you now. Come back. Don't continue on in your way and wander further into the darkness. The Lord is your shepherd. Come back to your shepherd and let him, let him draw you back into his fold. And, you know, he's willing to forgive you. If you've messed it up, you know, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't stop loving you because you've messed it all up. He, he loves you and he wants you to come to him. So just lay down your pride. Come back to the master. Allow his, allow his shepherd's staff to hook around you and pull you back onto the path. And if you do that, you know, Jesus will wash away all the blemish. Now, yeah, maybe there's some consequences for the way that you've been walking, but God will heal those scars and those scars can make you stronger and more able to help others who have similar problems or hang-ups or doubts, whatever it might be that you're hung up on. Don't don't let that keep you from the Lord. He loves you. He is the good shepherd. And the good shepherd cares for his sheep. When a sheep wanders off, the Lord pursues that sheep. And maybe God's pursuing you today through his word or through the words of, of, uh, of what I'm saying. I, I pray that you come back. But he's, uh, he, he holds his sheep in great esteem in great value. So for us too, you know, like when we're wandering along the path of life and we see another sheep wander off the path, man, we shouldn't despise that sheep, but we should lovingly try and restore that person and help that person back onto the path. You know, the master might call you to help him to bring that other sheep back onto the path. And he might use you to do that. So maybe God's put you in someone's life and you know that that person that you're walking alongside with has drifted from him. Well, the Lord asks you to, to 
imitate him. And what does he do? Well, he cares for his sheep. So we ought to care for one another, rather than despising the ones who have fallen and, and pushing away from them. Let's look for ways to engage them. And, um, I, you know, I mean, there's different scriptures about, about having or allowing people to come to their senses, but this shouldn't be in a haughty type of an attitude. If we're backing off of someone because they need to learn, well, then we need to pray. But there comes a time when we need to extend the olive branch out to that person and say, hey, come on back into the fold. The Lord is a shepherd, and so we ought to be shepherds in the same order as our Lord. I guess that's really the nuts and the bolts of this parable. Um, I pray that uh, you consider all the things that we've talked about today. This is food for thought. God bless each one of you.